What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 7 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API. So guys, in the part 6 of this tutorial series, I have taken you through the parameter mappings for all the incoming requests from the client. And in this tutorial, we will go through the parameter mappings for the responses that is being sent back by the backend integration of the API gateway. So let's get started. So here the steps are going to remain same, almost same that we have followed in the previous tutorial, right? So navigate to routes and here we will be using slash params resource or the route that we have created in the previous tutorial. And again, we will be using the same method that is post method. So click on that and say configure from the right panel. And once you are there, you will be able to see the integration details. So we have the Lambda function over here. So we will open it. And if you scroll down, then you will be able to see the parameter mapping and we have the parameter mapping configured for the incoming request as a part of the part six of this tutorial series. Now what we are going to do is we want to configure the parameter mapping for the responses that is being sent back from the backend integration. So here the backend integration refers to the Lambda function that we have attached, right? So what we are going to do is we will say create. So here within mapping type, we get two options that is all incoming request, but it is disabled. It's because we have already configured the parameter mapping for the incoming request. And the second option is for the responses that is response based on the status code. So basically it applies to integration responses when the status code matches the response key. So here we will be selecting the response and here we will mention the response code. So for example, this Lambda function right now returns status code 200. Now we want to apply the parameter mapping to the status code 200, right? So now uh, whenever this Lambda function will return status code 200, we want to apply this parameter mapping. So here we will mention status code 200 and we will say add a new mapping and whatever uh, modification that we want to apply. So within responses, we get two options that is header and the status code. Again, if you select status code, then we get only one option as a modification type that is to overwrite it. And within uh, header, uh, you can apply parameter mapping to any header you want. Correct. That is coming from the backend integration or the Lambda function. So as we know that we need to mention the header name. So here header name dot, for example, you want to modify the content type. So you will say header dot content type. And then you will select the modification type if you want to remove it, if you want to append anything or if you want to override it, right? Now, for example, this Lambda function is returning status code 500. Now you want to modify the response that is coming from the status code 500. So what you will do is you will change this status code 200 to 500 and you will uh, configure this parameters as per your requirement. Now you can also add the parameter mapping for multiple status code, right? So for example, you configured this for 200 and you click on create. And then again, you can go back here and say create. Now you want to modify the response for the status code 500. So you can do that for multiple status code. And one thing you need to keep in mind is that the valid status codes are between 200 to 599. So right now we will not configure the parameter mapping, but instead what we will do is we are going to simply invoke this API endpoint. Then uh, we will come back here and we will modify or apply or configure the parameter mapping and then we will see how the response that we are getting looks like. So I'm going to copy the invocation URL of the default stage. I will navigate to postman. I will say paste over here. I will say slash params resource that I want to invoke. I will pass on a simple payload saying body as message hello and the header as content type application slash json. I will select the post method from here and we will say send. So now as you can see, we received the status code 200. If we look at the headers that is coming from the backend that is text slash plain. Now I want to modify this content type to application slash json instead of text slash plain. So let's do that. And apart from that, I also want to modify the status code. Let's say I want to return 202 instead of 200, right? So let's have a look how we can do that. So navigate to API gateway, click on routes, select the method, say configure, scroll down to parameter mapping, say create, select the mapping type as response based on a status code, I will say, I want to apply the parameter mapping for the status code 200 that is coming from the Lambda function. And I will say add a new mapping. So first of all, I want to modify the header. 
So I will say header dot content type and the modification type I will select as overwrite it, overwrite with what? Overwrite it with a static value saying application slash JSON and I will add a new mapping again. I will select the status code. I will say overwrite it. So you cannot append or remove anything for the status code parameter. The only option that we have is the override. So we are going to select that and I want to say overwrite it with a 202. Correct and I will say create and we are done with the parameter mapping. So as I mentioned, this happened for the status code 200. If you want it for status code 500, say create, mention 500 over here, configure your uh, parameters, correct? And you can do it for multiple status codes. Now, since we are done with this, navigate to postman and again, we will say send. And now, as you can see, we have the content type as application slash JSON and the status as 202 accepted. Right, so guys, this is how you can apply parameter mapping for the responses that is coming from the Lambda function based on the status code and the valid status codes are between 200 to 599. So guys, that's all for this tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.